Welcome everybody. This is Benoit Tamang with NetNanny. We welcome you to this audio only webinar where we will be discussing how to secure your iPhone, iPad and iPod without any additional software. Clayton Osler is our speaker and our senior director of technology and we're really happy you're here joining us on this important topic. First, I'd just like to go over some housekeeping. Number one, again, this is an audio only and of course you can see the presentation in your screen but there will not be any opportunity to ask verbal questions we would like you to use the go-to webinar format of typing in questions as you as they come along and uh, Clayton will show you where that is number two this is being recorded and we will be sending out to all of you who attended and to those who didn't attend even though they registered an email will go back out to you showing you the link so that you can watch this webinar again again we are recording this webinar so that you can watch it and send it to friends and families and whatever so just letting you know that lastly before I forget on your go to webinar menu there is a small function that allows you to be able to raise your hands if you could raise your hands if you can see me I would much appreciate it again it's a function that allows you to raise hands if to make sure that you can hear us yes thank you very much and it looks like we're we're functioning so thank you very much we're glad you're here we have a very large crowd today for a very popular topic and uh, what we will do is go a good 30 to 35 minutes of content with Clayton presenting and at any time please pop in the questions we already have hundreds of questions and we will try to answer as many as we can on a verbal level uh, after the formal part of the presentation we expect us to go no longer than 60 minutes start to finish with that said Clayton it's all yours we are able to see the screen so take it away thank you perfect thank you Binoy I'm uh, excited to be here today I'm uh, appreciative of all of your time um, I'm overwhelmed by the number of attendees and uh, interest that we have in this topic and I hope it's something that can be useful to to you and your families um, as Benoit said uh, my name is Clayton Osler today I really want to talk about securing your iPhone and iPad or iPod um, using some of the built-in functionality that exists uh, and is provided by Apple today's uh, demonstration I, I'm uh, not going to present or show you any kind of new software um, a really common question from many of you is is when is net nanny for for iOS coming and I will I'll answer that up front that it is uh, still something that's in the future it's something that we're working on and um, as I describe some of the issues um, hopefully it will help you understand uh, some of the challenges we've had and help you understand why it's it's something that we haven't been able to re release uh, quite yet to uh, to give you an idea of the of the format that we'll go, we're going to use, as Binoy said, uh, if you will use Go to Meeting to ask any questions, uh, there is a form in there where you can type in any questions. Uh, most of these questions I will not be able to answer as I'm doing the demonstration, but at the end of the demonstration, uh, myself and many of our customer service representatives will uh, be on the webinar. They'll answer your questions and we'll make sure to uh, get any of your issues or or questions answered just to introduce uh, the company I uh, obviously work for NetNanny as most of you know uh, NetNanny is a uh, well-known parental control and protection application uh, we serve families in 157 countries we currently have solutions for Windows, Mac, and Android. And as I said, in the future, we will have something for iOS. It is something that's important to us, and, and we realize that's important to you as well. Uh, just to kind of give you some idea of trends in the industry, I, I created a couple graphs and have um, some facts that I want to give you. But if you, if you look at this top graph with me real quickly, um, this talks about number of mobile apps that are downloaded per year. If you look at it, it's less than well it's 500 million in the year excuse me it's 500,000 in the year 2008 and it has risen to just over 18 billion in uh, 
in the current year in in the year of 2011 it rise it rose to 18 billion in the end of uh, 2012 we expect it to be more than than 20 billion installed mobile apps so every time you go to that iTunes store and you tap on something that's that's increasing that count that's just information for your for your knowledge um, it's something that's growing all the time and, and more and more apps are being used all the time the bottom graph represents the number of mobile apps that are available in iTunes in tw um, in 2008 there were 15,000 mobile apps available in iTunes and now in 2012 it's it's risen to be more than 700,000 and they expect in within the next year that number to be over a million so that's something that's growing really quickly the average number of apps that we're putting on our devices has uh, risen as well um, it averaged between 10 and 15 in 2008 and in 2012 most people have over a hundred apps on their mobile devices um, for today's demonstration I took some time to uh, try to clean up my iPad as I took some screenshots and I took the liberty of counting and I, I found that we had well over 300 apps on my iPad and it's it's not even something that I uh, use frequently for for games but it's something that just continually grows and my kids seem to add things all the time um, the last thing I just want to point out is obviously mobile device usage is on on the rise um, right now it accounts for more than 20 percent of all internet traffic and uh, they expect it by 2016 to eclipse that of servers or uh, standard computer usage on the internet altogether. With all this information, um, it kind of creates a lot of confusion about mobile apps and uh, mobile data. Um, how can it be protected? Frequently, people are, are ask questions. You know, why do I care? Why does this matter to me at all? Um, can't Net Nanny just give me a solution and, and make it all go away? Uh, these are some common. Uh, questions that people ask obviously where is net nanny for iOS and can th this can't be that hard it, it, we should just be able to uh, buy something out of iTunes and, and take care of all of our issues so today I, I kinda wanna clarify some of the technology that's that's included in Apple's products and help you understand why it is a little bit more difficult than we than we hope for and also help you understand what is available and what you can do to help protect your family uh, to start out with there are some limitations that are built into iOS products. iOS is the name of the operating system that runs on iPads, iPods, and iPhones. And because f of security issues, and Apple is trying to create a unified user experience, they've uh, they've stopped the way they have limited the way that apps can interact with each other. Third-party apps cannot affect or interact directly with other applications. What that means is you can't buy a f an application from iTunes that is going to interact with the way your text messaging application works. Um, the text messaging application s runs on its own and I can't buy another one that would replace it or another one that would copy text messages to my to uh, a, a folder or or to another application. Apple doesn't allow that. They do not allow third-party applications to monitor or receive data that is going and coming from other applications. What that means is, with my text messaging monitoring example, if I had an iPhone and I wanted to monitor my child's text messages, Apple actually doesn't allow that functionality or technology. I can't purchase an app that would monitor the text messages on the iPhone. Um, it's just not allowed by technology and by security standards, and that applies to other applications as well. Third-party apps cannot work at an OS level. What that means is I can't install an app that affects the functionality of all other apps. I can't install an app that affects the functionality of my entire iPhone or iPod. Um, I can only install an app that interacts with itself. And the last point there, content filtering must be done at an app level. Because, because Apple has created this segregation, this separation of the way apps work, you can't content filter or block content to someone else's application. Meaning, I can't put a copy of NetNanny, if it was completed, on a phone and control the content that comes and goes from the Facebook app. That's not something that Apple will allow. They cite security reasons, and it also it also uh, allows them to kind of control the user experience and actually what happens on the device. So in summary, Clayton, yes, Clayton, thank you. I just wanted to interrupt and make sure that uh, we can go through this just a little bit slower so that everybody understands. Sure. But thank you. Just a quick 
just a quick uh, announcement. Thank okay, you. thank you. So to to give you a summary of, of some of those limitations and technology problems that exist in iOS um, for any kind of content filtering or blocking websites or blocking categories of content to exist, this can only occur in a custom web browser. A custom web browser would be a replacement or an alternative web browser to, to Safari, for example. Now, there's some downsides to this because if I create a or install a custom web filtering web browser, there's nothing in Apple's technology to force me to use that. Um, I could obviously go install a different or an alternative web browser, but if you want content filtering, it needs to be restricted to a custom web browser outside of Safari or many of the other alternatives that people use. Uh, number two, there's no way for an application on iOS, on iPads and iPhones and iPods to protect itself from being removed. This means if you install an app and you don't like the app and you long tap on it and hit the little X in the corner, it's going to be deleted. Now Apple does this intentionally so that if there's a bad app that's running slow or it's not something you want, you can instantly remove it. But they don't provide the functionality for you to protect the app um, as an application manufacturer or developer from being removed. And I'll kind of show you how you can deal with that a little bit um, in, in today's demonstration. And lastly, Apple has provided some parental controls um, already embedded in their device. And uh, I frequently talk with friends, uh, people that I meet that say, hey, I have an iPad or my daughter has an iPhone and, and what can you do to help protect it? And uh, when I show them these features that are already embedded, they're often uh, very surprised that they exist and uh, they're, they're something that are very useful and I hope that you and your families can find this to be of use um, in protecting your families as well. Apple does not label these as parental controls. Instead, they label them as restrictions. And I'll show you how to use these restrictions to protect your devices, um, to uh, restrict usage, um, to, to help your family get the most out of your Apple iOS devices. So I'm going to jump into uh, some screenshots of how to use this functionality. If you have a device at home, an iPad, an iPod, um, an iPhone, and you want to follow along, please feel free to do so. Um, Apple about three weeks ago released an iOS update and uh, they updated all versions to version 6. Um, that's what I'm going to use for today's demonstration. If you have an older version, most, most of these features will be similar, but it may not look exactly the same if you d haven't done the uh, latest update on, on your iOS device. So most people are familiar with this screen. Anybody who's used an Apple device has, has seen this before. Um, to get into restrictions, the, uh, the first step obviously is to go into settings. So you can see my mouse mousing over settings. If you tap into settings, you'll get a screen that looks just like this. Now there's many options along the left hand side. Um, most people are familiar with things like adjusting the brightness or the sound, um, setting up a new mail account. This is where all this is done. But the important part about setting up restrictions is that you need to go into general. So you'll notice that I have general highlighted here on the left hand side. And then in the middle of the screen you'll notice a restrictions. Now mine says on and that's because I've pre previously enabled the restrictions option. If you've never used restrictions before, this is just going to say off. All you do is tap on the on or off and it will toggle. And if your restrictions were previously enabled, it would prompt you for a password. If you've never enabled it before, it will prompt you to create a password. This password is different than your iTunes password and it's different than your unlock password if you're locking your phone or your, your tablet. This password is specific to the restriction settings. So a real common uh, question I, we get from, from many people is, well, I, I set up a setting on my iPhone and I don't want my kids to change it. How can I stop them from doing that? By enabling restrictions and, and putting a password in here, any of these changes will require this password before they can be changed back. So this is important, obviously, in, in getting restrictions set up. After you set up a password, you're taken to a, 
a screen that looks just like the one I'm showing you right now. On the right hand side we see lists of apps or content type or functions that can be restricted within the iOS um, operating system. Now you'll notice up here at the top it says disable restrictions. This indicates that restrictions are now enabled but it doesn't instantly choose what kinds of things I want to restrict in the device immediately. So here under restrictions the first one and the most commonly uh, used one is this option for Safari. In an iOS device the built-in browser for accessing websites is Safari. If I turn this feature off, the Safari icon on my iPod or iPhone or iPad is going to disappear. This makes it so that there is no Safari icon to be found. Now there's a caveat to this because if someone has gone to the iTunes store and installed Chrome or Firefox or Opera Mini, those applications are still going to exist. They're not going to disappear. Again, remember that iOS or Apple restricts functionality to specific apps. So they're not going to make Chrome disappear. That would have to be something that you would have to uh, go in and delete on your own if you don't want Chrome on the device. Um, this also brings up the topic of, well, what if I still need to access the Internet? Some people use browsers on mobile devices. Um, usage is, is decreasing all the time because of the number of apps. You can get a Facebook app and you can get a video app and, and all these apps are available but sometimes people just need to go to websites. So be, be aware of that if you make Safari disappear and the person using the device needs access to the internet uh, they're not going to have access to a browser. Now Content Watch we're aware of this um, and we're part of a, a net nanny solution would be that we would provide a web filtering web browser for iOS and that's really the only kind of parental control apps or protection that any vendor can present or offer for iOS. Right now we don't have that available. There are other web filtering browsers available in iTunes. Um, if you take a look in iTunes it's something that you can find. Uh, be aware though that just as I've mentioned before they're not going to be a complete parental control protection. They're basically going to be content filtering embedded in in a web browser. So if, if that's something that's important to you, please take a look in iTunes. Um, I wish we could offer one to you right now, but it's something that uh, that we're working on. We want to be able to provide a, a featured solution that uh, provides the protection and management that parents need outside of just a, a content filtering web browser. So that's uh, kind of one of the reasons that our our uh, release and uh, production of an iOS solution for NetNanny has been uh, long in the works. Uh, so jumping from Safari to the next one, many of these are very simple. Camera. If you disable this functionality, the functionality to both the front-facing and back-facing cameras will no longer work. FaceTime. The embedded application in iOS if someone uh, uses FaceTime to communicate, talk with their friends, uh, this is uh, this is specific to um, disabling this functionality. iTunes, you can actually turn off iTunes so that someone doesn't have access to the iTunes market. Now, a lot of our of our customers have asked the question of, I want to restrict my kids from installing things from iTunes or purchasing but I don't want to restrict them from viewing iTunes. Now Apple doesn't re provide a direct way for this functionality. Um, you'll notice iTunes is either on or off, which means if it's on, someone can go into iTunes, see what's there, and purchase music or purchase books or wherever they're, they're going in the bookstore, for example. The way that you can solve this is by either sharing an iTunes account within your family or controlling the iTunes password for your children. So in the case of my daughter, for example, she's 13. We've given her her own iTunes account, but I've controlled the password to her iTunes account. This means when she's in, in iTunes, she can browse, she can see what's there, but iTunes requires the iTunes password for purchases. And I'll show you where you can uh, uh, turn that feature off and on in just a second as well. But iTunes requires the user password. So in her case, when she finds music that she likes, 
she brings me her iPad, her iPod, and says, "Dad, I want to buy this." I type in the password, and, and then I can control which which music she she purchases, or I can approve it, um, depending on how how you want to run that in your family. But that's kind of a way you can mix the the functionality of not just turning all of iTunes off um, and and still kind of control what comes onto the device um, within your family. Down here, you'll notice installing apps and deleting apps. Again, if I turn installing apps off, this removes the apps icon from my iOS device. This means no one can go to the app store and see what's on, what's available for download or for purchase. This is this could be good if you got the device set up the way you wanted it. You got your six games for your four-year-old on there, and and you uh, you figure that it's perfect, and and you don't want he or she uh, browsing the the app store for new content. Um, again, if you if this disappears, then there's no way to look for it until you come back and re-enable this functionality, and you can turn this off and on just through the restrictions tab. The last one here is deleting apps. Deleting apps is important because if you put an app on a phone. Um, and I've had this happen before, and I had it hand it to my three-year-old and, and let him play the coloring game. Uh, I don't want to come back and find out that he's deleted my LinkedIn app for work, right, by accidentally long tapping and something disappearing. So this functionality um, is important to protect or preserve the apps that are on there and stop people from removing them. So that's kind of an overview of the allows or the allow and block functionality. Um, if you scroll down further on this screen, you'll notice the allowed content and this is where you can start to set up restrictions for what type of content or um, maturity level of content you want to be available on your devices so you know the first thing to notice here is ratings for um, if you live in the United Kingdom or in another area of the world outside the US you're obviously going to want to change this and it's probably already set to your locale based on where you live when you set up your your device originally but as as you as you noticed here there are rating systems for all these types of content so for example here under music and podcasts it says explicit if I jump into that you'll notice that I can turn explicit music and podcasts off and on this means that if uh, music is identified in iTunes or a podcast to have vulgar or profane language or inappropriate content um, it will be flagged as explicit most of you have seen that before when you're shopping in iTunes and in this case it can't be installed or downloaded and it will not play if it already exists on the device so if someone's uh, previously installed a, or purchased a song that had explicit lyrics that song is actually not available even if it's already on the device um, by, in, by disabling this option if you jump further down on that same screen there's the option for movies ratings uh, this is relatively easy to understand. You can choose the level or ratings that are should be available based on movies. So if uh, maybe you've determined that your kids can watch G and PG movies, um, you obviously tap and remove the check marks from the others and it could be removed. Um, this also does op offer the options to restrict movies altogether. Um, so you'll notice if I put it if I tap next to don't allow movies, then no movies would be allowed. Now there's a catch to this because if you have movies on your home PC and you're syncing them uh, through your iTunes app to your computer to your iOS device and that movie didn't come from iTunes it's not going to have an associated rating. So if I uh, I don't know have a downloaded cartoon that I I, uh, I downloaded from the internet and, and I copy it over to my device if that didn't come from iTunes it won't have an associated rating so it would just play unless obviously I set it up to don't allow movies altogether further down you'll notice that there is an option here for uh, TV material this works exactly the same as as films um, it's based on the rating system where you live in the world jumping down a little bit further um, below this category there you'll notice there's one called privacy privacy is important because it affects the way your applications interact with existing iOS functionality and I won't go into this a lot but obviously this gives you the functionality to disable location services so if uh, you have an app that says you know find my iPad and you don't want that functionality to work you can turn that off 
things like contacts and calendars. Apple has granted access, they're called APIs, but APIs mean access for other apps to use some, some of this content. So I could potentially install an application that says, you know, manage my contacts and it would pull all of my iOS contacts in. You can turn this functionality off so it doesn't exist. Um, also with photos, if you want the photos to be confined to your device and you don't want any new application to have access to those photos, you can turn that functionality off. Uh, both Twitter and, and Facebook have this, uh, this available as well. If you want to install an Instagram app that interacts with your Facebook account, um, then you would want to leave this function functionality turned off. If that's something you're concerned about for privacy level concerns, you could turn that off here under Facebook. Um, now there's a couple other things that I wanted to point out. Here under Allow Changes, under Accounts, I can turn this feature on or off. This will limit changes to accounts on the device. So maybe I've set up my, uh, my son on, on his uh, iPad and we've set up his email account and I don't want him adding any new email accounts. Or um, I've set it up so that uh, <laughs> he's got his existing accounts set up for contacts or for uh, many of the other accounts you can create and I don't want him changing that. If I lock this, this makes it so that new accounts can't be created and he can't associate his device with a different account. Uh, this is important for families that um, kind of monitor the usage of an account, but they don't necessarily uh, want their kids to add new accounts to the devices. A real frequent question that I, I was really unaware of is that many people want to know how to restrict or put volume limits on their device and that's here under the allow changes portion. You can actually set, set a maximum volume level. Uh, two other, the last two other things I want to point out, uh, you can disable multiplayer games and you can disable your family from adding new friends through this